Okay, we'll get started. Um, for the record, this is the September 8, 2014 North City School Board of Education regular meeting being held at the Roosevelt Center. It is now 6.30. Jeff, call the roll, please. Mr. Blowers? Here. Mr. Carr? Here. Mr. Harden? Here. Mrs. Nickham? Here. Mr. Blind? Here. Uh, Tim, Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, special reports. Doug, would you like to introduce folks? Yeah, I'm going to mention on the technology report, we're back in school, some of the things I've observed. We've got increased numbers in... Uh, in our uh, uh, with our equipment in our buildings and we continue to upgrade and, and increase and get more technology in our students and staff's hands uh, but the neat thing that we're going to show you next month since kids are back in is you go in our buildings and kids are doing announcements uh, not the old traditional way they're doing them through the TVs uh, set through there and uh, also uh, I'm going to try to bring in Liberty Middle School some of the kids there Mr. Carr might be able to bring in one child with him that's working very hard and doing uh, neat reports and, and showing the school a little camera guy. He's editing and doing a lot of things, which Greg's excited about because it's a good feeder system into our high school. And so at no time have we ever had uh, the excitement of our younger kids learning how to do some of those things and, and working in the high school. So that's our technology report. Seth has up on the board for you uh, the enrollment report. Just wanted to share with the board and the community kind of where we're at as we start this year now this is this is a snapshot of of one week in uh, at the end of August on where we started uh, school at actually last Friday I think are the updated numbers and I'll point out to you that, that, that we have a transient population which we know and our numbers do go up and down through the months so this is a snapshot of uh, the last several years uh, kind of look at an enrollment trend and, and trying to identify some some uh, uh, issues before they happen in the district. So, Seth, this is a district enrollment from 2004 uh, up through this fall. You can see at one time uh, in 2004, the district was up over 6,800 6, students. I want to share with you that that decline in enrollment, some of that is due to online education. Uh, and some of that is just to declining enrollment in, in cities. We have about 250 to 70 students in the Newark Digital Academy that numbers, those numbers are figured in that, those numbers on the slide. And, uh, and we have over 600 students in the district that learn online. And so you're, you're looking at another, you know, 350 students that kind of attest to some of that decline uh, each year. Uh, but you can see in 2010, we started an upward, upward trend back up. Uh, we certainly don't want to, from last year to this year, go back to the 2004 through 2010, but uh, that's a, a district snapshot. Seth, our kindergarten numbers, I don't know what happened five to five and a half years ago, but look at that, uh, that big spike in our kindergarten enrollment. Uh, and... Um, you know, some of the other county schools start offering all-day, every-day kindergarten. Uh, and so we're, we're not getting a lot of those uh, students that we used to get uh, through that, plus the fact that we kind of identified and, and uh, you know, and took a stand a few years ago saying the Newark City Schools is not going to be the all-day, every-day kindergarten for Licking County. And then everybody go back to first grade. So we did make an adjustment and, and uh, stop that. But a, a big spike back up this year. To, I mean, numbers that are actually kind of scary uh, for us. Seth? Uh, Pre-K to five, uh, you can see our, our trend, even though the trend in the district was going down from last year to this year, about 30-some kids, it's still going up in, in our elementary uh, grades. Mm -hmm. uh, grades six through eight, uh, again, uh, you can look at 04 where it was and the trend going down and, and in 2010 back up and, and uh, 
don't know why that number's down a little bit, but uh, as I can tell you, uh, our numbers uh, in two of our buildings, uh, Heritage and, and Liberty, are very high, and we still have some room in, in Wilson, and, and I'm going to share with the board, uh, shared this before to, to some people in the district, that uh, we have to balance our numbers out in our middle schools. Wilson Middle School needs to have more students in it, and the other two need to have a few less. And so we will be looking uh, this year with the help of the, the board and, and uh, we're having Jason Key go ahead and, and do it in, uh, where our enrollment's at and, and see about shifting uh, some more students over to Wilson Middle School. Uh, ninth grade, uh, Mora. You're in here somewhere. Shop, uh, what, what number are we at in the ninth grade? Uh, well, today it was 470, so that kind of, and I think our Friday was 469, so. Yeah, and you can see uh, last year where we were at with our freshmen. And since we have our freshman enrollment there, uh, I'll share with you. Our freshmen have gotten off to a great start at high school, and, and that transition program at the beginning of the year has, has really helped. Uh, we are in the process right now of doing transition program from elementary to middle school and even a better transition program from middle school to high school. So the, that's pretty exciting for us. Our staff is working on that. So, uh, And then our, our high school enrollment, uh, you can see, is at 1583. That is with CTEC students uh, in those numbers. And so I wanted just to, to share a little bit of uh, uh, where we were at at one time, uh, you know, I think you'd be hard pressed to find a similar district like Newark or many other districts that aren't similar in Newark, uh, the city districts that haven't had declining enrollment. Uh, some is just because uh, city populations have shifted. Uh, you know, our, our goal is we looked at our buildings and, and we were looking at the, the DeRoff study, which in 2004 with the building project. Uh, started projecting enrollments as we started to, to build buildings on what that would be. There was an adjustment in 2007, but that Duroff study is pr pretty close, pretty accurate. De Young. De Young. Duroff was it. All right. I'm just going to be quiet and let Jeff go, and I'll take a little break and get my tongue back. But uh, the, the Young group, Lord Almighty. But uh, in any event, um, thanks, Seth. I don't know if the board has any questions on enrollment. What was that kindergarten? 640. 637. So we're going to have a lot more kids. Yeah, and one of the, the issues that we have with kindergarten and preschool, you know, we have preschool units. I think when I came here uh, six years ago, I think we might have had four preschool units out in our buildings, and we're at eight and growing uh, somewhat. So, uh, you know, those are some issues that we're dealing with in our elementaries and, and I don't believe the the de young study or or the building committee could predict where the preschool was going but uh, we have our, our we have uh, more youngsters coming to us with with needs and uh, prior to kindergarten and you know that's a challenge for us uh, from a space issue and, and programming so but but we're talking about it and, and trying to hit that head on Part of that is people are starting to believe in York City Schools again. It is a great time to be a cat. So, <laughs> I don't think so. Okay, we'll move on to communications from the floor. If anybody has anything they'd like to address the board about, please step to the podium, give your name, your address, and uh, Jeff will be timing you have up to five minutes. Uh, my name is Levi Cummings. If I mispronounce anything, excuse me, I'm a little sick, so I'm, I'm off today. Anyway, I live at 233 Lawrence. I'm a student up at the high school. Uh, I wanted to address the issue of students not being able to wear their jackets or coats during the winter season. We're told to take them off inside. I was wondering what was up with that because a lot of students can't retain their heat or just get really cold still, even inside the buildings. And I was hoping that students would be able at least to wear them during the winter season and late fall, early spring, so they wouldn't get as cold and would be able to focus more on their work than trying to stay warm. That's about all I got to say. Okay, thanks. Do we want to address at this point? 
Well, we, we can address. I know there are things in our dress code that allow students to wear Newark pullovers and, and some things like that. Levi, I'm not sure what, what you're referring, if it's a, a big heavy winter jacket um, or... More like uh, heavier jackets, like not like a hoodie, like most students would wear, but something more thick, like, um, like a Carhartt or something like that. Something along those lines where it's better than a hoodie in case it's snowing heavily or something like that. Because a hoodie will just soak up the snow and get wet and keep them even colder. But I think it's just during class that they're not supposed to wear the coats. So no, they, they tell us to the take them off and put them in our lockers the right. second, we, second we show up. Right. But then they have the fleece jackets and the school colors and the hoodies. Um, the Newark Spirit wear hoodies that they can wear during class. But you're right, they do ask them to put their actual winter coats in their lockers during the school day. Yeah, I just know students that don't have a hoodie to wear under that, so they would prefer to at least be able to wear them around to keep them with them, but take them off in class. Because I know a few students that take them off and put them on the back of their chair and then do their work and then just wear them through the halls just so they have it with them in case it does get cold in the room. And Levi, I, I uh, promised Mrs. Horgan sitting back there, and uh, so uh, one of the two of us will will be over and and talk to you and and sit with Mr. Folan and and talk about that. Okay. All right. Thank you. Yep. You're welcome. Thank you. Anyone else like to address the board? Okay. We'll move on to treasurer's recommendations. Item 2A is approval of board meeting minutes. It's recommended the minutes of the following board meetings be approved as shown in the appendix for August 11, 2014 regular meeting and August 21st, 2014 special meeting. Item 2B is approval of the August 2014 financial statements and payments to the vendors. We received the amount of $3,347.08 in interest during the month. Our uh, balance, overall balance is $37,683,265.18. The breakdown by fund is general fund is $24,820,000. Bond retirement, $3,410,000. Permanent improvement, $1,130,000. Building fund, $100,000. Food service, $1,170,000. OSFC project local, $120,000. OSFC project state share, 1,610,000. Insurance funds, 1,860,000. Classroom facilities, 2,730,000. Miscellaneous others is 720,000. Total agrees with the bank of $37,680,000. Item 2C is the approval of the fiscal year 2015 permanent appropriations resolution. The appropriations for the entire, all the funds in, the, in our school district is 91 million. $975,158 for fiscal year 2015. Item 2D is approval of additional services proposed by Gallagher Benefit Services. It's basically a $2,000 contract for uh, Gallagher to con conduct an actuarial analysis certification of our dental program, which is self-funded. It would cost us $2,000 to have that service done, and it is required. Item 2E is approval of software license agreement. Uh, it's recommended that the board approve the, the uh, EDGE uh, document solutions. It's a software license agreement that will allow us to sign purchase orders, checks, and as those purchase orders and checks are created, they will automatically go into an electronic file for filing and storage and records keeping so that we no longer have to have hard copies and storage facilities uh, related to that. So as our hard copies that we got on or now, most of those will be gone in seven years. You have to retain them seven years. We're starting now to try to do stuff electronically so that everything's stored in the computer and uh, won't take up additional building space anymore. And that's what item 2E is for. Total cost of that is right around $4,800 to get that done. I would hope that the board uh, ask any questions and once that is done, would approve these recommendations. Make a motion. Second. Discussion, questions? 
I was just going to say, Jeff, that general fund balance is just about where the state recommends we should have it as a percentage of our yeah, budget. When you break, yeah, when you break it down, and, and that's probably the peak that you'll see because we got the property tax coming in uh, during the month of August. So uh, you'll see it taper back down, then you'll get the first half property tax and it'll bounce up a little bit. But uh, the state recommends that, that you have three to four months balance on hand in your general fund to cover your total expenses. We cost about $5.2 million per month, so you can pretty well figure it out for yourself. Yeah. Okay? Any other discussion? Okay, call the roll, please. Mr. Harden? Yes. Mrs. Nickham? Yes. Mr. Blowers? Yes. Mr. Carr? Yes. Mr. Blind? Yes. Thank you. Superintendent's recommendations. Okay, uh, under item 3A, personnel. I will speak carefully. We have uh, the resignation pending approval on item eight on this Amy Norman technology support specialist, uh, primarily at the high school, uh, Angela McCutcheon, supervisor of technology. We appreciate Angela's work the last couple years. Uh, item three, I want to call attention to Melissa Fellamley and Don Wasson, who both participate in the Community Advisory Council summer teacher inter internship program which uh, basically they go for a week and, and work in one of the area businesses and learn about uh, uh, that company, what they do, like what type of workers they need and what we should be training our students to do. And, and I know both of them have done, you see Dawn did three weeks uh, this year and that's our commitment to that. And so we appreciate the community support of that and the businesses because they, they both gain a lot. It's really interesting talking to them uh, about what they've learned and what type of skills some of our our kids should be coming out with for from the workforce so I appreciate what they do um, item four is the supplemental contracts Greg Avery standing right back here filming again uh, that's an example of, of what his supplementals for uh, Greg Ardry there and salary and position adjustments uh, are basically for the people we hired uh, earlier as they turn their paperwork in we know where where to put them on the uh, agenda uh, item seven substitutes I will thank Dave and and Barb working hard that we've got a good list of substitutes and would would tell anybody in the community if you uh, qualify uh, for uh, being a sub in our district we'd love to have you we've got a good good number now and then eight Amy Norman supervisor of technology and her contract is prorated uh, from the start of, of uh, August 1 Items one through eight. Okay, we would accept the motion. So moved. Second. Discussion, questions? Okay, call the roll, Jeff. Mrs. Nickham? Yes. Mr. Blowers? Yes. Mr. Carr? Yes. Mr. Harden? Yes. Mr. Blind? Yes. And under students and curriculum, we have a special education contract with Eagle Wings. Uh, item C, gifts. I want to thank Legend Elementary. PTO for their $10,000 uh, technolo technology gift uh, to the elementary and Target for Take Charge of Education, $650.70 to Newark High School. Item D, contract service, approval agreement of transportation service with Lakewood. And it's basically we transport some of our students to Columbus and uh, take one of their students and they share in the, the cost of that so it's a win-win uh, uh, for both districts okay, we would accept the motion to approve superintendent's recommendations three B C and D so moved second discussion okay, Jeffrey mr. Harden yes mr. Carr yes mr. Blowers yes mrs. Nickham yes mr. Blind yes I do not believe we have a legislative liaison report. You don't. Okay. So we'll move on to board discussion and start. Gypsy. I've never been first before. I'm not prepared. Uh, it's great to see all the fall activities going on, uh, the sports. I know tryouts this week for the fall play are taking place. So get out there, uh, try out for the play. Go see some kids in sports, and it's great to see the football team score touchdowns. I'm so excited. They're doing a great job. Uh, I pass. 
Well, it is a great time to be a cat and enjoying watching uh, what the, the students are doing in all of the schools. Um, it's an exciting time to be back. Uh, the activities are, are just ramping up. Um, I was on the athletic schedule today looking to put all the football dates in my calendar, you know, so I would, and, um, but I'm seeing volleyball here, you know, cross country, soccer, it's just, um, there's so much going on and it's a lot of stuff for young people to be involved in. I know they're doing uh, Lego robotics at the middle school, Liberty. And um, they've got like 33 kids signed up for that, which is, uh, which is awesome. And, um, and so there's just so much going on and uh, it's a great time. Pass. I'm just happy and privileged to be in Newark, <coughs> Ohio and uh, took a couple of vacations over the summer. Glad to get back to work. Glad to see the student body get back to work. Glad to see that Newark City Schools is not in the headlines except for positive comments. So I want to thank the Newark Avenue for that, for covering our positive stuff. Okay. Uh, three weeks into the start of school, I can report that we've had a wonderful start to school. And, and I know it, uh, I appreciate uh, our administrative team who, who starts that off, uh, uh, the guys and gals right back here. We've got a wonderful group of directors and and uh, coordinators, and I appreciate their efforts. Uh, and it goes right along with uh, our principal. Somebody asked me, hey, how's the start of school? And I, and I reflected real quick on, boy, we've got a great team here, and a great team that's worked really hard, handle uh, situations when they when they come about, and, and uh, our staff, our teaching staff, ready to go, uh, taking care of our kids. Uh, and I will tell you, I've made a real big effort. I always do. I love to look in, in our buildings and, and see how clean they are and, and things like that because I truly believe that it makes a big difference. You know, we want our staff out front welcoming uh, students into a building, and it makes a big difference when kids come into a clean building and a, and a positive atmosphere. And, and that, that goes from these people sitting back here uh, to the people who drive the school bus and cook lunch and clean floors and teach chemistry and and uh, but it also goes to our kids. We we have a great group of kids. So you know, 6,400 kids that came into the building and and uh, 6,399 of them came in ready to go. We've had a, a pop up here and there, but you know, it's uh it's been great. I, I want to read a, a quick letter from the class of 1964 just to to share uh, how proud I am of of our staff and. In our buildings, and the reason, the way I'm slurring my speech today, I'm really going to go slow on this. I wish to take this opportunity to thank you for your time and effort to make our class tour of Newark High School on July 20th a success. The class of 1964 was the first class to spend all three years at the high school, the new high school. This being our 50th anniversary, the tour was very nostalgic and brought back great memories for our classmates. The former band members were elated by the extra time you granted them in the band room. We had nothing but positive feedback about you and your professionalism and knowledge during this event. Thank you, respectively, class of 1964. And that is to Mr. Quackenbush, our athletic director, and I wanted to point Jeff out because he's an example of what our staff is. Jeff is our activities director and head basketball coach here and many things. These tours are given during the weekend. And Jeff comes up during the weekend, and I know probably at least six times this year he took groups through there. So we invite all of our groups to come visit our buildings at any time. I'm sure Jeff would like to fill his weekends up with that, but uh, Jeff is a representative of uh, the kind of people we have that go above and beyond uh, to share that. So it's always nice to get a letter like that. I'm, I'm uh, really happy that the, the class had a had a uh, good walk through and, and uh, spent that time in there. And I'm really happy to have uh, f a person like Jeff Quackenbush who helps lead us. And, and again, Jeff's just one of them. I just chose this letter because uh, we get very few letters like this, as you can imagine, uh, just because people don't take the time to do that. So I appreciate the class of 64 pointing out what kind of uh, staff that we have here. And I thank Jeff for his time on the weekends. So that's it. Uh, I've just got a couple things. I uh, wanted to mention I attended the Friday evening session of Rachel's Challenge last week, which had been presented to the high schoolers during the day. It's a really important, powerful message. And I'd like to thank those folks who were involved in bringing the program to Newark. Um, 
as Bev mentioned, all sorts of activities, sports, fine arts going on, get out, support the kids. And along those lines, it takes money to run these programs. The Athletic Boosters have two programs going on or activities this weekend. Um, Sunday, I believe that's the 14th of September, they have their golf outing at the Trout Club. And for those of you who golf like I golf, on Saturday they have their 5K, which is a run, walk, meander, however you want to get from point A to point B, they will be more than happy to take your $25 and let you go. But anyway, these activities go toward helping with the busing of our activities, and it's really important that we get out and uh, support them. And if you want a good laugh, I'll be trying to run it. Um, so with that, we will be moving, I believe, to the front lawn because our superintendent accepted um, the ice bucket challenge and passed it on to the rest of us. And none of us have, except for maybe one, have the good sense to say, I ain't doing it. So we're going to go get ourselves doused. Pardon? Which one? He gets, five gallon bucket, he gets the five gallon bucket then, yeah. by default. And once we're done with that, I would take a motion to move into executive session to discuss the appointment, employment, dismissal, discipline, promotion, demotion, or compensation of an employee. Yes. Second. Jeffrey. Mrs. Nickham? Yes. Mr. Blowers? Yes. Mr. Carr? Yes. Mr. Harden? Yes. Mr. Blind? Yes. We're out at uh, 659. <laughs>